and welcome to This Week in Atheism. This Week in Atheism is a panel discussion brought to you by the Center for Atheism, and it usually involves <coughs> articles uh, taken from The Focus, which is the newsletter put out by uh, the Center for Atheism. If you would like to receive a copy of The Focus in your email, just use the information that will be scrolling on your screen. I don't know why I get into that alliteration thing every time, but that's it's just easier. Right. Uh, this show is going to be easy for me today, too, because uh, first of all, let me just introduce my uh, co-panelists. On my left is Alex, and on my right is Robert. And um, we're uh, actually today, I think we're going to uh, discuss uh, something that Robert wanted to bring up. And why don't you just bit. roll with it? Well, uh, since we're getting into the I'll Christmas season, back. one of my interests is the origin of things. And, um, you know, I've, I've always been interested in the origins of Christianity and, you know, just how superficial so many of these events are. So let's go back a little and talk about Christmas and the Christmas holidays. Christmas for most of the last 2,000 years has not been a significant holiday for Christians. That's true. Um, in fact, liturgically, it is only the third most important, uh, the nuns used to tell us this, or the priests, that it was only the third most important holiday liturgically after Easter, and almost nobody knows the second. You know what the second most important liturgical event in the Christian calendar? The Epiphany what we call um, a January 6th, the Feast of the Magi, because ah. theologically it was the first time Christ was worshipped as God. Ah. So it takes precedence over Christmas. See, Interesting. When I was studying for my bar mitzvah, they left it on what completely. Happened? What happened? Go you figure. Go figure. Go figure. <laughs> it must have been a reformed school. No, no, no. <laughs> no reform school it was, was so like, reformed. No, re reform school was after I got busted for marijuana. So, <laughs> no, right. Right. Not so sure. anyway, you know, the Christians knew that they had a problem with re replacing the pagan holidays because people were having a good time. So they very have conscious. That. You can't have them having a good time. No. So they very consciously decided to put. Christian celebrations to replace the pagan ones. Mm -hmm. And since the, the, the pagans had the Saturnalia, in which there was a week of something like Mardi Gras where you went wild for a week, they decided to make it the, the solstice. We have no idea, as everybody knows, when Jesus was born, if he was born, the year, the time of year, nothing. It's all just artificial. Well, well, let me, let me, uh, apparently, uh, the idea is that, um, uh, like many Middle Eastern religions, apparently, some far as the solstice. Yeah, well, right. well, no, but I mean, as far as the 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 birth of Jesus, it's it, there is a certain pattern to the uh, theory oh, the of dying uh, God, the God being born in the right, spring and right. dying in the summer or the winter right, or whatever. Right, right, right. Well, he gets born. born for some reason in the winter, the lowest point of the right, sun, right. but then gets resurrected but that in the spring. That follows a very old a vegetation pattern. pattern. Yeah, as pattern the, of the virgin the birth, right. the virgin right. birth, and the child being shunted away to protect right. the child and that kind of thing. Well, yeah. the, the virgin birth. And the blood sacrifice. That's actually very old right, Roman right, Mithraeus right, tradition. Right, and so they right. kind of stamped it on mm -hmm. one another. And Lord uh, Raglan did a, the, the Life of the Hero book in which he enumerated all the stages. Well, and and of course, Joseph Campbell. Campbell, the Hero with a Thousand Faces, and Fraser, etc. Right. So anyway, how does Nicholas become such a mage? Who was Nicholas? Ah, St. Nicholas. Nobody right. has any idea who St. Nicholas was. So you can do it, it's all on, you know, on, on the web. Nicholas was actually a terrorist, all right? He was a lunatic bishop of Myra in what is now Turkey. Ah. And he was a bishop at the first council of Nicaea in 325. He was at that council that formulated the Nicene Creed under Constantine. Incidentally, people don't even realize most of the bishops, they were Arians. They were heretics. So the whole thing was in I didn't know that most of them were... I, or a lot of them, I mean, I, including the emperor. Constantine and his whole family were Arians. Is that true? Really? Yes. Because yeah, I've, I've, I've been reading Constantius, about Constantius. They were all they were all Arian heretics. As was Milton. I mean, uh, it was it was a and it really hadn't been sorted out all these issues. Now, I, I, he was actually one of the people that destroyed a lot of of, of pagan temples. Mm -hmm. He was the Osama bin Laden of Christianity. Ah. <laughs> all right. In fact, Osama was a little peon with just a few buildings. I'm, I'm not. I'm not condoning that, please. Right. Right. Uh, you know. But um, he I really went through. Analogy, he right. went through all of Asia, knocking down great temples and burning things. Anyway, what's really f fundamental? Um, my family, part of my family, was from Bari, Italy, and he's the patron saint of Bari. Why? 
um, they were looking to fight the Crusades in the 11th century. And in 1087, my ancestors were pirates, and they were ordered by the Pope to redeem their sins and steal a body. So they went up and down the coast of Turkey, and we stole the body of Nicholas. And we built a big basilica in body, which is still there, a great Romanesque basilica. And then they let you into the fraternity. And then they let me into the fraternity. <laughs> Actually, there was a big nude beach there, but we won't go there. All right. <laughs> Nope. That's that's in my memoirs. Right. That's not for the television. Not, not only that, but we have to That's apply. coming out after my posthumously. We, we have to reply for a later time. <laughs> a slot. later time so slot right, right. on uh, <laughs> a special channel. Yeah. All right. So anyway, Nicholas is brought Atheist over. Atheist blue. Atheist <laughs> <laughs> blue. So anyway, Nicholas body comes over, and he becomes a big focus of the Crusades. Now, nothing happens then, but... Three New Yorkers create Christmas as we know it. All right? In fact, four. All right? The first is Washington Irving. This is the 200th anniversary of the publication of his book, Uncle Knickerbocker's History of New York. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of lectures at the library, etc. He's a remarkable figure culturally in our history. He gives New York its name Gotham. He creates the Sal Magundi Club. He creates the concept of New Yorkers as Knickerbockers. Wow. And the Knicks, of course, are named after him. Mm -hmm. And he's the first one to mention Santa Claus. Wow. He gives him his Dutch name. And he's the first one to talk of him as a white-haired, bearded man riding around on a horse at night. No reindeers yet. Now, All right? Look, look, can I, let me just, let me just uh, uh, stop you right there just because... Uh, You're running I, out of time. I, no, no, no. no. Oh. I, I, just to make a point is that apparently up until that time, he was, was a bishop. Right, but I mean, I mean, uh, in, certainly in the colonies, Chris, celebrating Christmas was frowned upon. Isn't that the true? Puritans, the, the Puritans, Puritans outlawed it from yeah. 1657 to 81 or something. Right. They uh, outlawed it. Yeah, and I think in England too, it, and, wasn't, yeah, yeah, it, it was, was frowned upon. And was, even when I lived in England for three years, Christmas was not celebrated. It was Boxer Day. Ah. Boxer Day, everything was closed. I never understood that. Could, could you briefly explain Boxer Day? I never understood it. It was the day, the, the, the best thing the kids could tell me at Oxford was that it was the day they opened up the boxes of their presents or put them away. I never, under, I, I should look that up on the web. Oh, they ran around their shorts. They, oh, ran around, oh, they, oh, they, oh, they <laughs> back to the blue channel. Okay, you have to stay away from the, the blue sorry, channel. Sorry, we're going <laughs> to... We're dragging this down from a very high theological level. <laughs> right. Yeah. It didn't take much dragging. It didn't take much. <laughs> uh, it, we well, may be cut off the air at this rate. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't use the word drag. I would like more like plunge. <laughs> so I, I'm not sure. It's, all they could tell me was it was the boxing day. But that was the big holiday, not Christmas. So anyway, what happens? Washington Irving is fundamental, and he and his gang start celebrating December 6th, the Feast of St. Nicholas, as the patron saint of New York, this Dutch grandfather figure. Now, this, talk about this, you know what I was thinking about, like, Daniel Dennett and, and Dawkins' concept of memes, how <laughs> these memes get built on. Mm -hmm. The next fundamental figure is Clement Moore. In 1822, he, or Henry Livingston, writes The Visit of St. Nicholas, The Night Before Christmas. He was professor of Hebrew at Union Theological Seminary, all right? And a friend of Lorenzo da Ponte, who was Mozart's librettist, who came here and died here in 1835. He's buried out in Queens, right near my house, um, mm -hmm. in an unmarked grave, but I always try to visit and lay some flowers for Lorenzo, who was a converted Jew. But anyway, they, anyway, that's another story. But this group then wrote this. Now, this poem then gets picked up by the guy that's in a way most important, Thomas Nast. Ah, A Thomas German, Nast. Bavarian born who invents the cartoon. Right, right. From right. 1862 to 86, he does something like 22,000 pictures of Santa Claus and invents Santa Claus. As we know it. As we know it. Right. All right? It was this visualization of the jolly old man that had been adumbrated by Washington Irving, Clement Moore. And then the last really thing in 1931, Coca-Cola ah. <laughs> wanted to put this Santa Claus in their ads and got a Swedish artist named Haddon Sandblom 
to create, and they insisted that his suit be red like the Coca-Cola bottle. <laughs> right. And that's why he's always in a red suit, because it had nothing to do with Christianity, it's with Coca-Cola. And since eight, 1931, the he created, and he used his friend Lou Prentice as the model. So every time you're seeing Santa Claus, you're really seeing Lou Prentice, whoever he was. Uncle Lou. Uncle Lou. Uncle Lou. All right? And that's why he's in red. That's why he has the job. Oh, and they wanted the little cap, like the Coke cap. And he, what we're really worshiping is Coca-Cola and the cartoons of Thomas Nast. Nast. And it has almost nothing, as we think of as Christianity, with the religious but holiday. But it's entirely American. Right. <laughs> it, it's not, yeah, exactly. It, it, exactly. As the American, as exactly. we know it, is made exactly. for it was an advertising really New York. company. Oh, and the other thing was, uh, Dickens then gets commissioned to write three novels about Christmas. All right. Incidentally, the Morgan Library has the autographed copy of the of, of the uh, the Christmas Carol. Wow. And they take it out every year. It's, it's out. Uh, I think they have it out now, and they bring out the autographed copy. He wrote another book, which was more or less not as popular, called Chimes, because it's far more radical and socialist. Right. And that never got the traction because it was a little too edgy. All right. Probably about helping the poor. Too truthful. Too Probably. truthful. Yeah. So they like the schmaltzy. Right. version, you know, and that was a huge kick to the idea of Christmas. So that's really, and then it got picked up commercially um, and, and created, but it's really a 19th century New York creation for all effective purposes, and Thomas Nast, because up there, if you go see, if you go to the Metropolitan or something and ask to see a picture of St. Nicholas, it'll be a bishop. Right. They'll have some well, pictures in, in the bishop's well, mitre. Or no, no. Where where did they get the i? Where does the idea come from that that's that he gives gifts? Yeah, that, that, basically he was giving gifts. I mean, that's there was what, a, there what was, I was. There was a myth that uh, a story that uh, you see. Also, they're obsessed with virginity. Ah. Right from the beginning, Christianity's main obsession is sex. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Right from the in fact, if you look at Lewis Crompton's great book, Homosexuality and Civilization, it's very erudite. And he talks about when the barbarians are pouring over the border, the empire is collapsing, and the Catholics hold a council. And he points out that the whole debate, two-thirds of it, was about sex. Not about preserving the empire, sex. Right. You know, what was prohibited, what was not prohibited, virginity. Now, St. Nicholas gets tied into this virginity thing. There were apparently, the, the legend is, there were three girls, they were too poor, so he put the money for their dowry. You see, girls can ah, get married without a dowry. That's right. That's and that was the gift giving, the R, and then it got just blown up in the 19th century, out of all proportion, and tied to the Magi thing. Uh -huh. You see, the Magi that's thing strange. merged with him giving the gifts to the virgins. And that kind of melded into the gift and giving. And when did Macy's open its doors? <laughs> right, the right, 1860s, wasn't it? That was the other big thing, right? Right. right. We should not shopping. forget underestimate that. No, we shouldn't. Right. Uh, I want to. I want to say that apparently, though, that the uh, the Catholic Encyclopedia is pretty forthcoming about the uh, the fact that December 26th was deliberately the, chosen, I think. The 5th, 25th Christmas. Oh, did I say Christ, the, uh, 25th? The, right. The 25th, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, the, yeah, the Christians never really denied it. Right, I they, mean, they're uh, pretty open about it, but yeah. I, I think, but, but I yeah. think, but I, I don't know about, it's, it's been your experience, and I don't know, oh, probably. Like many Christians think that that really was his birthday. Yeah, yeah I mean, oh, yeah. but I find, I find yeah. in, in discussing, uh, Religion with people who claim to be religious. Yeah. Most people don't even know about their own religion. You know. Uh, oh, nothing. Uh, nothing. Most of all the most of all the, the Christians who, you know, who are Not the most clue. vocal against a atheists. You know. Exactly. Uh, uh, you think they're sitting around reading the Church Fathers at right, night? I right. Mean, they're looking at porn sites like everybody else. <laughs> right. 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 Well, there's always Unless there's upside. religious porn. There might be religious there is porn. There is religious porn. <laughs> there, are, there is always. I mean, there is that upside. There is the upside. At least. At least. Is that a pun? <laughs> That was terrible. No, I wish I'm it was. Sorry I, I wish, I'm sorry. I wish it was a pun. I wish it was. Uh, no, but it's true. The, the yeah, they know more atheists know more. A exactly. Atheists know more about exactly. various religions. Because we've had to fight them, or we we had to withdraw sure. from it. You know, you, you have people that are very. I, I live my life like Christ. I'm right. a Christ warrior. I right. this is my right. religion. This right. is my culture. This is my right. family. They would have no clue. And in fact, right. they probably think you were lying to them. And you know what? They don't care. 
You know, like That's when right. I get a, 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 couple, a couple of summers ago, when I used to sit in, in Union Square at night, and they used to busload these young kids in from the south or wherever well, it's to, just, to proselytize. Yeah. And of course, they were clueless. No, they you know. just hear Jesus, and Jesus, Jesus is your right, friend, right. and Jesus will well, help right. you, that's and that's me. it. Right. That's yeah. that's and then what I always tell them is, Jesus told you how to be perfect twice in the Bible. They never know what that is. Twice the centurion asked them how to be perfect. What did he say? Give all you have to the poor and follow me. And the centurion says, but that's too difficult. Right? Oh. So the thing about Christianity, it's really impossible. Nobody can really live, unless you're St. Francis of Assisi. And remember what St. Francis does that electrifies everybody in that dramatic way. In fact, uh, Auerbach says in Mimesis, today he would be making an Italian film. He would have been a filmmaker. Right. He was an extraordinarily <laughs> visual person. And when his father forbade him to, to go into the church, he went down into the main strip and stripped naked. Right, 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 right. And said, I have given all to Christ. I have nothing well, else. Well, that sparks debates hugely right. over centuries in the Catholic Church. Over on poverty. What, over poverty, exactly. Right. How much is too much to give away? Should you give away any? How many taxes and, should and, come to the church? And, and not till Protestantism does this get sealed. You see, because it was always a running tension in the Catholic Church because the whole ideology was the poor. You know, give to the poor, that's how you're saved, save the old ladies, you know, and, and the monastic orders were sworn to poverty. It's Luther and even more Calvin that gets them out of that by dilemma by saying it's not your deeds but your faith that saves you. Right. All right? It doesn't matter when you help the old lady or you give money to the poor. All you have to say is, Jesus is my Lord, I accept Jesus, and in that moment you're saved. Well, and then you get to Calvinism, and it says, then, well, and then, God already decided whether you're saved or not. You, so now right. you just got to try as hard as you can. And, and those loonies then come to America as <laughs> the Puritans. Exactly. They come to America and found the whole thing here. And that's why in America we're so uncomfortable with poverty. Because Calvin said the poor are clearly not the elect. They are the ones that God has damned. Right. And therefore the elect are the rich. God has shown right. his divine grace by showing on earth that they're going to be the chosen. Well, and not only that, but, but uh, uh, kind of uh, along the same line, but Paul uh, says, you know, he totally he starts this. He totally starts the whole, the whole right. idea of, 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 of uh, accept, accepting, you know, the, the government, whatever government is appointed over That's you. right. Well, that's right. Caesar, what is that's Caesar's right. to give to the Lord? Right. Right. The Lord's. And right. That's one thing that you look at the religious fundamentalists right. in this country are very much against taxes, are very, keep the government right, out of right. the way. Jesus said, but what did the, Jesus say? When you look very specifically at what he right. says. Yeah, and Paul, Paul and gets Paul very, even more about very obedience specific, to the state. The obedience to the state because... Very, the, principalities because, and, right, right. because if you're a good person, you don't have to worry about the government at all. Right. Because, uh, of course, that generation thought that Christ was coming imminently. And it was... You know, it's very clear they thought that second coming was imminent. Yes, and it was very politic for him to say that at the time because, because of... The Romans because were, of necessity, yeah, he had to suck right. up to the Romans. I mean, right. that's basically right. they were on his back, and he you know, was going around. It right. was very, it was very. They were very concerned because Christians were being persecuted by the Romans, uh, and yeah. and Nero. and you know, uh, Nero at, dipped them in oil and used them to light his parties. Right, and they were running around the uh, the party at night. And you know what Oscar Wilde famously said? That was the last time Christians were known to bring light into the world. Ah, <laughs> nasty, nasty. <laughs> And that's why they did to Oscar Wilde what they did him for many reasons. Amongst, they didn't, other, amongst other reasons, other words, yeah, they didn't yeah. like Oscar. Yeah, <laughs> apparently he didn't think he was causing enough trouble, so it just added more fuel to the fire. Yeah, I mean, apparently things were getting, so to speak. things were getting so too. They, they weren't warm so enough. They weren't warm enough. <laughs> <laughs> Things were getting too quiet, apparently. But try that uh, on your Christian friends. Tell them that was the last time Christians brought light into the world. Oh, that's <laughs> That's awful, awful, awful. I, we're definitely going to get condemned on this program. I'm uh, sure the FBI or the CIA uh, is picking this up. Right. Uh, well, actually, there is, and this is an aside, there is this lady. Um, uh, a, a wolf. Uh, uh, who does the Greek Naomi characters? Wolf. Yeah, she does. She has a. I just saw a program. Oh, yeah, yeah, she's a preacher. Apparently, she married oh. a much older man. This, oh, uh, no, the no, man no, was no. much much older, and he was the originator of this sort of preaching, where she takes the Bible, 
in the the Greek. Uh, oh, theme. Melissa Scott. Yes, Melissa Scott. My so favorite, my, my latest Thank favorite. You. And she oh, she, just... she puts all the Greek words up, and she sits there and she translate furiously translating from Greek, Greek and, and this word, Greek, Greek and Hebrew, and Greek, and Hebrew German, and Latin, as if she knows exactly what she's talking right. about. So yeah. uh, you know, literally the fifteen minutes of the show right. is just well, and this word meant this and very fast. She's a very cute little right. small lady, right. furious, furious Greek, and by the end of it, you have no idea what she said. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, there's there's absolutely do, nothing right. going on, but, but she is a translator and she's well folks, educated and she's folks, Let me tell you stuff. something. We could do a whole show on on, on Melissa Scott alone. Oh, really? Oh, really? She's my latest favorite. Uh, does she have a degree? I mean, she knows. Uh, her husband making... taught her. He her, was the, oh, the minister her, who uh, originated. Her husband oh. was the late uh, Reverend Eugene Scott, and he was one of these um, uh, eccentric kind of. Uh, rever reverends, you know, you know, like mate was loaded, had a huge ranch, uh -huh. made no apologies for it, and what he would do is when he to get people into his uh, services, he would call a local modeling agency, and he'd have these hot young models in the front row, oh and she God. was one of them, and I guess he threw over his wife for her. And uh, he is now deceased. I, I don't know if his first wife is dead or not. She's a lot younger. She but, a lot younger. Oh, yeah, much, yeah, yeah, she's much, 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 much. <laughs> yeah, she is, she's, she's young, she's beautiful, she's glib, she's funny, she's full of it, basically. Uh, she's just, she, I mean, it's, what you said is very true because, she on cable because, uh, uh, yeah, all over the, yeah uh, the cable basically what she does, and, and she's cool very right. convincing because, uh, it looks like she knows what she's talking she, she about. She puts up right. put, puts up these things the in Greek coin, and coin ride, Greek, right. and either she, I, I'm Who gonna, knows, right? yeah, I'm yeah. guessing she's got a certain, and then, well, she does. She has a certain amount of smarts, because unlike some of these other preachers that, no, you know, right. that, that, that Jesus that, saved you. Yeah, you know, unlike right. these other preachers that, that basically cater to people who spell philosophy with an F. Uh, <laughs> She she has if a they spell it at all. she has a way of of, of <laughs> phrasing that it sounds very sophisticated wow. oh, yeah. and, oh, okay. and, and stuff. she's going so fast she's, oh, she's the high she's end filled. audience and yeah. I, I uh, what, what you said is absolutely true I, I I defy anyone to listen to what she says for makes fifteen sense seconds and then repeat back what she says I would like I would but like it's, Bart it's Airman to, to confront her. You know, no, somebody who actually never, real, uh, and she's really very mysterious. But, uh, but in the same way that we're talking about Christmas, there's this whole idea mm -hmm. of obfuscating right. it, of putting it in these packaging of this is what our religion means, this is what right. Saint Nicholas right. means, this is the lady translating the Greek. She's right. translating right. the Bible literally, right. it's, and it's, it's all flimflam. There's nothing totally, going on. It's totally, uh, put, it's, it's totally uh, constructed to uh, make sensitive white people think they're being <laughs> preached to, preached to on a you high know, level. You know, that right. they're really Getting right. something very like profound, erudite right. and profound. It's like the ones who read C.S. Lewis and they think they're getting, you know. Yeah, it's like it's so like you know, it's, the it's same like totally nonsense. Deep, to, you know? Yeah, like, right. It's, the it's fact like that he was a don. So what? He's wrong about this, you know. It's like yeah, yeah. it's it. it you see, my generation had Fulton J. Sheen. Who ah, was the, Fulton. The yeah, I remember you know, he yes. always had that black cape. Very, uh, you, <laughs> very <laughs> Russian. <laughs> you're, no, this you weren't even in the. Gleam of your father's eye at this point. I this was the 1950s. Him. Yes, I remember, remember him. Sheen? Very sinister Jesuit. Everybody thought he was going to be Pope or at least Cardinal. He never was. They didn't trust him. He was too sinister. And he would always he was give probably, the very, he was, he probably knew too much. He would always <laughs> swing in with this Jesuit cape flinging there and then give the very <laughs> theological brimfire lectures. She you know, was, with the she evil was, Irish brogue, you well, know. See, I see the very, guy she was Dudley do right with the oh, mustache. Oh, very. You know, she was such a mad queen, her. right? Oh, she was a mad queen, this one. <laughs> mad, mad, sinister, twisted. Oh, I, I love... I won't even go into what her private life he was, said, but I don't know. He said, uh, he said, he said something that uh, that I think is actually kind of funny. He, he said an atheist is someone with no invisible means of support. Did he so? Yes, that, I think he coined that with phrase. With no invisible means of support? Yes. He, he was clever. Those he was old very Jesuits, clever. they were tr clever but twisted. You yes. know, because their lives were so miserable ultimately. You know, so they just had this incredible cleverness because yeah. they were smart boys who had been picked to convert the world. Yeah. And they were very successful. Well, know, yeah, I mean, he, terms, you know. I, I mean, he probably knew what side of the bread is, it was buttered. Yeah, and, right. You know, you know, I mean, it was a good job. You know. was a good, I went yeah. to a Jesuit university. I got a yeah. great education. Yeah, they were diverse. You know, they were diverse. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, they were, yeah. They were known for being the great educated, the great... I, you know, I, I, great I do remember Fulton Sheen, scholars. though. I, you remember him. I didn't think you were that old. Uh, I, I, well, I was... I you was, were very young. I was very young. You're very young, right. I just very aware five-year-old. 
<laughs> no, but I, I... I was actually young. <laughs> I think, we, no, we got our first television set in 1952. Yeah, well, me too. So, uh, so yeah, I remember, yeah. so I remember... And he was always that cape. Yeah. And I kept he was, he was just swishing in with that cape. I don't know what he was doing with that. It was very sinister. Reverend Sheen, wherever you are. I mean, yeah, he was, you not, he was not. He was not Scott. He was not uh, Melissa Scott. No, no, it no, was another generation. No. They wanted sinister. No, Melissa Scott. They has wanted to, hell. Melissa Grim Scott Grim. has to work really hard to, to go where, 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 where he got there by, natu by nature. You know. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. And you know, another thing we don't emphasize is how the clergy in, in the Catholic clergy in America has always been Irish. And therefore, in America, we get a particularly yes. sinister form yes. of Christianity, unlike Italian Christianity. Yes. Um, because Polish and Irish Christianity were formed as the cultural identities of oppressed people yes. against either England or Russia that had different religions. Yes. Religions that looked upon them as the underdog. Right. And therefore, their Christianity was extremely fortress-like. Right. It was their and cultural, def and cultural defense. Right. You know, don't do this. It was you had to be in the fold. Right. And right. very, very severe. Well, whereas Italians are lovers and not fighters. They don't care. You know. <laughs> you know, my grandmother always just said she lived in a town where on one hill was the uh, was the seminary and on the other was the convent and in the middle was the orphanage. Right. 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 You right. see, and and nobody would have said that in Ireland when she used to tell that to the Irish ladies on the block. <gasps> They thought, oh my God, don't say that. Yeah, and the orphanage was next to the brothel. Boy. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> and then she said she always had two, pri two, two priests in the family. One was a sinner, one as, was a saint. As much as it pains me, I've got, I, we've I, got to go I, on. We've got to go. Listen. I don't uh, know how we got through that. Uh, oh, I'm I, sure we have a new I, record I, with the CIA or something. No, 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 no. We're, we're, <laughs> we're, I hope we're this fine. is being deleted. Uh, no, no. no. Uh, <laughs> not on your life. This is, Do I have a life? Uh, I mean, this life or the one after? Not, af not after this, but listen. <laughs> We, the life of this particular show is over. I want to thank Alex and Robert for joining me as co-panelists. Uh, thank you for joining us, and please come back for the next chaos, a round of chaos and complete breakdown of social order. You've been watching This Week in Atheism. I've been your host, Dennis Horvitz. Please join us again next week. Oh thank you. Oh, my God.